This is the thinking and writing process, level two. I'm going to be showing you how to think with information and put it into writing. And I think you'll find it pretty easy if you just follow my lead through this videotape. Before we begin, however, you're going to need some parts. Let's look at what you need. First of all, you'll be needing an envelope, something like this. It's a mailing envelope. You can just cut it in half. And when you do, if you had another label to put on it for your name, that would be great. You can, then you can print your name on it, and you'll be all set. The other thing you're going to be needing is an outline form. It's a form that looks like this. And you're going to be folding this form in half. It says Topic Outline, Level 2, down the bottom. And you'll fold it in half. And that's where you'll be storing anything that you need for this process in that fold. One of the things that you're going to be needing for the process is a, a synonym form, like this. You'll fold this in half, and it'll store into it. And another thing you'll need will be some notes. As you take your notes, you'll be putting them on cards and putting them in here. And then you'll go back to your envelope that you have your name on. And this is the tricky part, trying to get your fingers in to open it up. And you put it into the envelope, like this, with the fold on the outside so that nothing will fall out. And true enough, nothing falls out if the fold is on the outside. And that's how you can store your notes in between all of the times that you come back to this process. So what you'll be doing then is getting that envelope and getting it ready. Before we go on then, I'm going to ask you to turn off the tape and get yourself an envelope, get all the parts you need, get some blank note cards, and be ready to go. Turn off the tape at this time. Okay, the first thing we're going to do then is choose a subject. Let's take a look at our steps. We're going to choose a subject, and the subject has to be something that's small enough so that you ha can manage it and not have so many notes about it, but that it's long enough to be able to have enough notes and you, you, enough information about it. Choose a subject. My subject is going to be the common loon. You may use my subject with me if you'd like, but it isn't necessary because you can use your own subject and follow my directions as I use the common loon for my subject. Step two is find information or use your own knowledge. When you find information, it's for research writing. When you use your own knowledge, it's from your own experience or from something that you learned earlier. Finding information, however, means you have to have sources. You have to find information out of books or videotapes or interviews or whatever. Using your own knowledge means you ask yourself the question, what do I know about such and such? And you pull the information up and put it on note cards. What you'll be needing if you find information is a bibliography form. So get a copy of the bibliography form. And if you're going to be doing research, you'll need this so that you can put the author on the author line. If it isn't an author but an editor, you'll write the editor. Put the last name, comma, and the first name, or the last name of this one, comma, the first name. Put your name up here and your subject up here. This particular book becomes source number one because we've put it on there. Put the title in quotes with a comma on the inside. Title of the major source with a period at the end of it. Write the city of publication with a colon and the publishing company with a, with a comma and the year of copyright with a period after it. If you use volumes, write the volumes with a colon and use the pages used and a period after that. So you'll be using at least two sources probably. And if that's true, then you'll be source one, source two. If you need source three, that'll become source three. Source means the place where you get your information, what you're using for information. You'll need to find those before you actually start research because you could end up with not enough information and have to change subjects, and that's too hard to do. So at this time, let's review what you're to do. You'll be turning off the tape, and you'll be finding your sources, and you'll be making a bibliography format for each source. 
If you fill that all out, you'll be ready to go on to step three, and I'll teach you then how to take the notes. Turn off the tape at this time. Ready to go on at this time? Let's go on. Step three is take notes. Let's look at what we do here. We're going to be taking notes of information about what our subject would be. The first thing we'll be doing is getting our note cards. Each note card that you get should have your initials in the upper corner. And then, if, you'll, if you're reading your, your sources, your books, you should look at your bibliography form to decide, well, this is the second source on my list, so I'll be putting a 2 there. And I got this off of page 41, and I put the page number of the source where I'm getting this note. And when I, dis when I read the note and know what I want to write, I write a very short note. And we can say, waggles feet common loon waggles its feet. We do not want this note to be in a sentence. We want only the key words, and we would like at least two of those words so that we can remember what the note is. We do not want the word loons in our sentence because loons is our subject of our whole report, so we don't need that. Be very careful. Be sure not to put the note in a sentence form because that sentence will end up in your report. If you just pull out the key ideas and write them on the note cards, those key ideas then will later on help you so that you can form your own sentences at the right time. It makes a wonderful report that way. Don't do anything else on this note card, however. Only write on the lines I've shown you. The, the circle has nothing to do with this step. This line has nothing to do with this step. Don't write anywhere else. Don't write down here. Just write under the word note. You do not need to write your subject on this. This is for later on. You'll use that at a later time. So at this time, be ready now and take your notes. When you get your notes taken, you can come back to us. What I'd like you to do, however, before you turn off the tape, is to take uh, probably 25 to 35 notes. That would make a nice report. You could go up to 40 if you had to, but not more than 40 because it gets too long. Take 25 to 35 notes. And then come back and turn on the tape, and I'll tell you what to do with those notes. Go ahead and take your notes. Ready to go? Good. Your note taking is one process, but the next step is the fun part. This is the part which turns your thinking into your notes, so they become your ideas. This is called think of reasons. Let's look at how it goes. Step 3a, think of reasons. What you'll do now is take your whole stack of notes, all the notes that you've read, and put them into one big stack and put your pencil aside because you won't want to be dealing with your pencil or your pen right now. And you'll read every single note and you'll ask, for what reason? One note at a time, but don't write on any of them yet. Right now we're going to do some thinking. We're going to try to figure out what these notes mean to us and to get these notes to connect to one another. This is my favorite step. It makes students able to think of fabulous connections among their ideas. So here's how it goes. Waggle, the loon waggles its feet, or they waggle their feet. I'm going to, I'm going to 
wipe off the F S there and say, waggle feet for what reason? Waggle feet for what reason? And I need to not write on it, but I'm going to say, um, to keep them warm in the cold water, to keep the blood circulating in them. Good. If you have partners, you can all discuss this together, but no one writes on them right now because this is called stretching your thinking. Thinking stretching. Dying of mercuric poisoning. For what reason? Because there's so much mercury in the water that the fish are dying are, and, and the, are poisoned and the loons are eating the fish and they're dying of the poisoned fish. Oh, I see. Now we can think that through. Dying from starvation. Babies. For what reason? The acid rain has killed the fish in the lakes and there's nothing for the babies to eat in some of the far northern lakes except rotten seaweed or um, poisoned seaweed from acid rain. Whoa. Unchanged for 60 million years. For what reason? I'm not sure why. Do I have to have a reason? No, I don't. I can go on to the next one. And I keep on going, asking these questions as I go. So at this time, I'm going to have you do that, just asking all those questions one at a time. And when you finish, then go back and pull out the notes that you want to write on. And when you write on them, you write to keep. And I want you only to write on, oh, about eight of them. Between eight and 12 would be just fine. We don't want to have more than a third of our notes be full of reasons. So between eight and 12, if you have 30, 35 notes, that'll be about right. Write on reasons for between 8 and 12 notes, and the rest of them leave blank because you don't want a reason on every single note. If you had a reason on every single note and put that all in your paper, it would be terrible. It would sound just terrible. So let's review what you're supposed to do before you turn off the tape. You're going to be reading each note one at a time and asking for what reason, studying them and thinking about them, going right past the ones you have no reason for, and then you'll go back and write on the reasons right on some of them. Get ready to do that at this time. Turn off your tape and come back and we'll give you the next step. Ready to go on? Let's go on. Let's go on to step 3B. Let's see how 3B is going to go. This is called thinking of likenesses or differences. And here we're going to have to use our knowledge and pull up what we know about other birds so that we can connect to the loon. As we go along with 3B, what we're going to do with this one is read all the notes all over again <clears throat> this time we're going to ask the question, like or unlike what? Maybe you don't want to do unlike. If that's right, then we just read, read the question, like what? And that's okay to do that. Let's try it. We read the, question, the note only. Waggle, feet, like or unlike what? Hmm. And again, I put my pencil aside because I don't want to be answering any questions. I don't want to be writing on any of the questions. I just want to be answering them. Waggle feet, like or unlike what? Uh, unlike wa maybe unlike land birds, birds that live on land. Dying of mercuric poisoning, like other waterfowl. Dying from starvation, the babies are, like or unlike what? Uh, unlike land, land birds, perhaps? And we go on through and we ask and we try to 
changed, unchanged over 60 million years, unlike any other bird. Do I have to have a like or an unlike on these birds? Uh, no, I don't. I don't have to have one. I skip over it, live for 20 years, like or unlike what? I don't know of any, maybe, so I go on. Marrow in the bones, like or unlike what? I don't know any others that have marrow in their bones, and I go on. You just try to discuss them, all of them, one at a time. And when you finish, go back to your notes and pull the ones that you're going to actually write on. And maybe, um, maybe eight of them, six to eight of them, put like, like or unlike what answers down here on, underneath the question. So at this time then, what you're going to be doing is either doing it alone or working with a partner or a team, asking un like or unlike what, and thinking of all the like or unlikes you can think of. But the ones you really like are the ones you're going to be putting into your report. So then you go back and pull those notes and write on those. Get ready to go. Go ahead and turn off the tape and come back again when you finish writing your like or unlike what's that will go into your report. Ready to go on? Let's try it. Step 3C. This step is going to help you to be able to have a different way of writing your sentences instead of always writing them so they sound the same. It's a step that many high school students have a lot of trouble with if they haven't had help with this at early ages. Let's take a look at how it goes. On this step, we're going to plan sentence patterns. We're going to think of different patterns to use for our sentences. Here's how it works. I'd like you to find notes that have a reason, or a likeness, or both. And on those notes, I'd like you to plan some patterns that are out of order. For example, the way I would read this note usually, rather than reading subject, I write, read the word loons. I always have to say the word loons or something that means loons. Loons waggle their feet to keep them warm. That's my sentence. It's one, two, three. Loons waggle their feet to keep them warm. That becomes a one, two, three sentence. But now how can we write this sentence out of order? To keep their feet warm, loons waggle them. Or to keep warm, loons waggle their feet. Either way would be good. What pattern did I use though? To keep them warm, Loons waggle their feet. Three dash one dash two. Three one two. That's the pattern I used. How about this one? Loons are dying of mercuric poisoning like other waterfowl. How can I do that out of order? Like other waterfowl who are dying of mercuric poisoning, loons are too. Or loons, like other waterfowl, are dying of mercuric poisoning. Let's try that. Loons, one, dash, like other waterfowl, two, uh, four, dash, are dying of mercuric poisoning, two. That becomes a one, four, two sentence. And when I sit at the computer or at my tablet, my sentence will be all ready to go. I'll be able to write it out. So at this time, get ready to turn off the tape again and see if you can find some out-of-order patterns among your sentences that have a reason or a likeness or both. Go ahead and turn off the tape.
Ready to go? Good. Now let's think of some way that we can think of something else to call our subject beside loons. I keep talking about them as being loons. Isn't there another thing I can call them except they or them or loons? Let's try it out. Let's look at what the step is. This is step 3D. 3D. Think of other words to call your subject. What you will need for this is a form called the subject synonym form. And fill the top of it out when you get it. Then, on the subject synonym form, on the line 2, write your subject. Circle plural or singular, and then circle the pronoun that fits it. Next, we're going down to this open area down here with a box around it, and we're going to think of doing verbs. Doing verbs, things that your subjects do. What do loons do? They fly, they dive, they raise chicks, they protect, they swim, and they walk. And you write all those doing words right here. Over here, we follow the arrow to change to nouns. Fly, they become flyers. Dive, they become divers. Raise chicks, they become chick raisers. Protect, they become protectors. Swim, swimmers. Walk, walkers. At this time, I'm going to ask you to turn off the tape and just do that part, and then we'll come back to it, and I'll show you what to do next on that form. So think of doing verbs, doing words that your subjects do. Turn off the tape at this time. Let's go on with the subject form and try some more. Moving on to step 10 on the form. Line number 10, we're going to be thinking of other nouns. Now this one's tricky. We don't want to think of nouns, just ordinary nouns, but they have to be nouns that substitute for your subject. I can't say wing or feathers or foot. Those are nouns, but they aren't nouns that mean the whole common bird, common loon. So, birds, however, is a noun, and what I can ask myself is, my subject can be called, or loons can be called, they can also be called, and go on down my list. Birds, fowl, creatures, and animals. I can't think of another one, and I can leave it blank. I don't have to think of another one. At this time, turn off the tape and think of other nouns to call your subject the loon. Let's go on. You're going to go on now and use us, your own subject, whatever it is, but we're going to think of adjective, noun, pairs. First of all, we want to fill out the line, anything that's to this to the left side of that line. We want to think of words to describe your subject. We could say, my subject can be described as being beautiful. My subject is graceful. It's described as being clumsy. And we can say they're beautiful creatures, graceful swimmers, and clumsy walkers. So now we go up above and we put the words down here or get them out of our mind. If we didn't have one up there, we make up another noun. And now we have word pairs so we can think of ways to call, things to call our bird in pairs of words, describers and synonyms. 
Finally, the last one isn't very often that we can figure it out, but it is possible. So you think of an adjective that you can change into a noun. Speedy becomes speedsters. That's possible to do with loons, but if you can't do it with your subject, don't feel too bad about that. It isn't always possible to find one, but sometimes it is, and that's why that one's on the bottom of the form. At this time, then, would you turn off the tape and go ahead and think of word pairs, thinking my subject can be called, fill in the lines, then fill in synonyms. On the bottom, think of an adjective that you can change into a noun. Go ahead and turn off the tape. Ready to move on? Let's go. We're ready now to sort our notes. On this step, which is step four, you work alone. If you have had a partner or have had a team of people working with you up till now, this is the point where you no longer work together. You take your own notes and do your own thinking and organize them your own way. That way, this product becomes yours and not anyone else's. So let's see how this step looks. First of all, we're going to Take a look at it. It's called sorting your notes. You're going to take your notes and put them into stacks, one at a time, putting them all into stacks. And when you have all your notes in stacks, or as you're putting them into stacks, you'll be naming your stacks. This is a step that, if you've had any practice before, it would help you. Or you could take a moment and just predict, when I put my notes into stacks, what might I predict that I could name those stacks? Make some predictions before you start out. It might help you a great deal. At any rate, here's how it goes. You look at your first note, you read it, and you, try, and you set it down on your table, and then you try to decide whether it goes with your second note. Unchanged for 60 million years, does mine go, do mine go together? Um, I think they do go together. They're both about survival or about threats that get along, They're about the threats that, it, that they've been dealing with. I'm going to call this stack threats. Since I have two that go together, I now can name them. I write threats on the top one, and I put a T on any one that goes underneath that. Live 20 years, uh, it's, about, it's about their, um, I don't know that that goes together or not. Let's wait a little bit. In fact, I'm a little confused about it, so I'll put it up here as a confused note. Marrow in the bones. No, that has nothing to do with their threats. So that's a separate stack. So now I have two stacks and one confused note. Ring neck. Oh, these two go together. Yeah, these two are both about their bodies. So I print bodies on one of the notes, and I put a B on the other note, and I slip it under my body's note. Black and white. That goes with the bodies, doesn't go with the threats. And I put a B on it, and I slip it under the note. Checkerboard backs. Oh, there's another bodies idea. I put a B on it, and again, I slip it underneath the notes. Dying of mercuric poisoning. That goes with the threats. T. And that goes in the threat stack. When I finish, I end up with three different stacks. There are bodies, threats, and homes. That's how I finished when I finished these. When I look at my live 20 years now, I can pull this out and say, well, here's my confused note. I can either throw it away or try to fit it into one of these. I think I would put this under homes. For 20 years, they've been going back and forth to their homes down south, coming up north. That's how they've been living. I could have put it under threats, meaning maybe some of them aren't living 20 years anymore. So at this time, I have my stacks, and I have named them. Now I've learned a way to do the naming of the stacks as I'm stacking them. And that's a very important step. If you learn how to do that, you won't be needing us adults around you as you're forming your stacks. As two go together, give them a name. 
only write on the top note and put initials on the other ones. Otherwise, it's a lot of busy work. You don't need to write all those words all the time. But be sure you write something on there because it could be that you'll get interrupted and then your notes will get mixed up. So it's the best if you are sure to write at least the initial on every single label, every single topic. At this time, then, get ready to turn off the tape. And what I'm going to have you do is turn off the tape and make your stacks of notes. The ones that get in your way and are confusing to you, just put them over in the corner and come back and do them later. But do the ones that are very clear to you. When two go together, give them a name, stack them, and form all your stacks. And then when you finish with that, come back to the tape again and I'll show you the next step. Let's move on to the next step. The next step is step five. Step five, we're going to be needing an outline form, and it looks like this. An outline form that you should fill out at the top and put your subject up here. I am going to be putting common loons on mine. When you fill that out, <coughs> you will next look at your your stacks of notes and decide which one you're going to want first. Thinking of your reader, which one do you want first? I decided I would like to have my body's notes first. Then I'd like my home's notes. And then I'd like my threat's notes. <clears throat> so it'll be in that order. And when I write those, I will write them on my outline, just like this. <coughs> bodies goes over to my bodies, Roman numeral one. <coughs> homes goes to the home stack, homes line. And the threat stack goes on the threats line. One, two, three, just like that. At this time, would you turn off the tape and uh, get out your outline form, fill out the top of it, arrange your notes in an order, and put them over on the Roman numeral one, two, and three stacks of notes. Step five is finished. Let's go on to step six. Let's look at how it goes. Step six says, write your topic sentences like this. You've outlined your topics, and now you're going to write topic sentences. On the outline form, there's a place for you to do this. What you have to do is write a topic sentence in this box over here. And it must have your subject, draw a circle around it, and your topic, draw a circle around it. Loon, common loons, this will be mine. Common loons have unusual bodies. And I circle my two key words, bodies and common loons, to double check myself. Sure enough, I did just fine. The next sentence, I must have the word homes and common loons. But this time, I would like to start with homes. 
and then have common loons be afterwards. So I don't always write common loons have homes, common loons have threats. I will write homes are, circle it, important to common loons, period. And I circle the two parts of my sentence. Finally, I need the word threats and common loons over here, and I write, I'm tired of writing the word common loons, so I'm going to say these birds are in serious threats. Birds and threat. I got them both into one sentence. At this time, I'd like you to write your topic sentences. Look for your two key parts, the subject and the topic. Don't make a sentence that's a question, however. Make it a statement sentence. Do not make a question. That's, I'm going to call that illegal. It isn't wrong. It's just off limits right now. I'd like you to make a sentence so that you'll know how to make a topic sentence, because you already know how to make a topic question. Make, make your topic sentences at this time. You're now ready to number your notes. Let's move on to step seven. Let's look at how it goes. Step seven says number your notes. You've written your topic sentences. We're looking at each note now, and we'll put them into order so that they'll be ready for you to use in your report. First of all, we look at our topic outline, and we say, OK, the first one was bodies. So we take the bodies notes first. And what we'll want to do with these notes is to spread them out so that we can read them. So first, I lay them all out, and I like to cover up everything <coughs> but the note so that we can read them. <coughs> Reading through these, I'm going to say that I'd like to have this be my first note. And I put, put a 1 in it, and I put it over here to form another column of notes. And then I would like... <clears throat> black and white to be my next note right after the checkerboard backs. And I'd like ring, the um, ring necked to be next. And the marrow and the bones will be my fourth note. And now I have them all in order the way they're really going to be in my paper. So my number one is on the top. <clears throat> I take that number, numbering though, <clears throat> and I go over to my outline. And my first one was right here. My last one's here. One to four. Since this is my fourth note, the next note will be number five. We will have no more number ones. We fold up the pack like this, <coughs> and we put it face down, face down, so that it'll be in order when we're ready to write our reports. Up out of the way. For me, my next one is my Roman numeral two stack of notes. I take my Holmes notes, and I spread them all out, and I read them. And I'd say, this is going to be my fifth note, and my sixth note, and my seventh note. I would like them just like they are. And I push them, I push the five, six, and seven. I have to put the seven on my outline. And then I scrunch them up, and I crisscross them over the other stack. So I now have two stacks of notes all taken care of. One of them starts with number one. The other one starts with number five. <clears throat> Finally, we number these notes. Since this one was 7, the first one will become 8. And I would say this is going to be my eighth note. 
and my ninth note and my tenth note. And that's how I number my notes. And I put eight through ten on my outline. I scrunch them up, put them crisscross in my stack, and there we have our notes already numbered, ready for us to write our report. So what I'm going to have you do at this time is go back to your notes, take your Roman numeral one stack of notes first, lay them out, number them and form a new column, and keep on going. Record your numbers on your outline. Turn off the tape at this time. You're now ready to write your report. This is the easiest part. You've done the hardest part already. Let's take a look at it. Looking at our form, we say step eight is write the product. Here's how you do it. Take your tablet paper, if you are doing it on tablet paper, and lay your ruler along the outside edge so that there's just a little bit of paper showing so you'll get a straight line and draw your line for a margin. If you're doing this on a word processor, of course, it won't be necessary. But if you're handwriting it, this is the way you'll have to do it. Then write your subject on the top line. Under that line, you'll be skipping a line. So you'll skip the next line, and we'll go down to the, next, the third line, line down, and we'll put a little tiny X right there. And on that X, we'll begin our first topic sentence. So we'll go back to our outline, and we copy. Common loons have unusual bodies. We copy that right here. And we don't have room for unusual, so I go back to the margin. And everything gets hugged up to the margin from now on until I run out of all these notes for that paragraph. That should be easy for me to know because I now have a stack of notes and I just peel the top notes off. It's my numbers one through four and I turn these into sentences but I have to have loons in every single sentence, either loons or they or their. Something like that refers to loons. They have checkerboard backs. Okay, that's how we could write that. They have, so my part one is they and have checkerboard backs is my part two. I put this one down, I'm all finished with it. I can put it aside, face down. And I can say they are black and white, and I could add it to this one. I could put these together. They are black and white with a ringed neck. I can put them together. They are black and white with a ringed neck. And that's how it would sound. And I keep on going. I put those two together. I'm tired of writing they and their and loons. I'd like to say something else. So I go back to my subject form and I say, these birds, these birds or these creatures are, have marrow in their bones. have marrow in their bones. And that's the last sentence of that part. So now I'm ready to go back and start a new paragraph. And I indent two fingers, and I put a little x. However, I used the word creatures here. And now I can go over to my word creatures, and I put a check on the word creatures. Check that off. I should also have be sure that I have have circled the ones that I really want to be sure to use. I don't want to use all of them, so I'm only going to be using about four of them. So you circle the ones you're really going to use at this time, rather than using all of them. Otherwise, it'll sound just terrible to use all of them. I'm only going to use about four or five of them. 
circle those, and then check them off as you use them. At this time, then, do two things. Get out that subject form and circle the ones you're going to use, and then get out your, your, your paper or your computer and begin to write your report. Always write your topic sentences, and don't forget to put the parts of your notes into your sentence. Let's take another look. As you write your sentences, you have to be sure to include your like and unlike what's so that when you are writing about this one, I have to be sure to say that part has to be in it and the sentence structure has to be in it. Be sure to include the reasons and the likenesses and be sure to use your subject form with all the circled words on it. All right, so now you're ready to write your report. And when you're finished, come back to me and I'll help you to look at that report over so you can find some of your own mistakes. That's wonderful. Go ahead. Now we're ready to finalize our report. But before we do that, we're going to need a title page. Take your tablet paper and take the template that we have here that will help you. This is a tracing form. Insert the sample title page underneath your tablet and write your words where it says title here. I wrote common loons, small b, small y. That's what you write. Where it says your name, you write your name, your teacher, and the date. And now you have a beautiful title page all set to go. This will go on the front of your paper. That means that you won't be needing to write your name on the first page of your writing. You see, we just have your title. You don't need a heading on it because your title page will take care of that. Now we're ready to look, look at our writing and see what mistakes we can find. I put my report on a word processor. And when I look at this report, I have two different ways to, to learn how to fix it, to, to examine it. This is one of them. This form is a form that has two sides to it, two halves, <coughs> part one and part two. If you fold it in half, that'll help you. You can look at my report and Read each question and see what you've done. Did I write my title on the first line centered? Yes. Did I leave blanks in the above? And so on and so forth. And ask every single one of these. When you finish with that, this is my favorite side. Lay the form along your paper so that only one sentence shows. Read that whole sentence and then ask all six questions. And you should be pointing and nodding with your head or your pencil. Either nod with your head or point with your pencil. Does this sentence make sense to me? If it does, you nod. If it doesn't, you shake your head and put a little question mark out here in the margin. Does it make sense? I'm going to come back later and fix it. Did I start this sentence with a capital letter? Point to the letter, nod, I did. Did I end the sentence with an end mark? Point to the period, <coughs> nod, I did it. Do I feel, this is very important, here's my favorite question. Do I feel uneasy about any of my spelling? If you feel uneasy, <coughs> lightly circle with your pencil the word that makes you feel uneasy. Now I'm looking at words that are common words, not the big words, but the ordinary words. We're going to try to fix those words and catch them before you get any older with them. Do I feel uneasy about my capitalization, capital letters, or feel uneasy about punctuation marks? Circle what you're uneasy about. Go on to the next sentence. Ask all six. Use your lips and your tongue. Word your questions so you will slow down. <clears throat> Point to the words as you say them aloud to yourself. Too many times I see boys and girls reading and pointing to the words, and reading and not pointing to the words, and what they're reading is beautiful, but it's not on the paper. So this will help you to be able to read what is actually on the paper. This system works. So go through and see if you can find all the mistakes possible and when you finish, then you'll go back and fix those mistakes. All right, at this time, turn off the uh, tape. 
<coughs> you can go back and check your mistakes, see if you can find all the mistakes possible. Finally, I have one more way to help you to find your own mistakes. <coughs> it's a checklist. This checklist looks like this. And on it, there are several things that you can look for in your report. <coughs> what I want you to do is look where the little blanks are. And if you did something, put a dot there. And if you didn't do something, put an X on it. If you partly did it, put a half an X. When you get through dotting and xing the whole report, go up and count your x's and half x's. You had seven of them, perhaps, that you found by yourself. All by yourself. You didn't need any help. And down here on the bottom, it says, are there any spelling words? I'm going to find two, no more than two, maybe even one. Words like there or where. And then I'm going to help, help you to find, what you want to do is find a way to remember those. So you can say, well, I am in there, and he is in there, and those are ownership words. So that becomes my ownership. And here is in where. That means here, where. Those are related. That will help me to know which where to use. Your teacher can help you also to do that, or your parent, or another adult. But when you go through and have somebody look over this to give it a score, we'll say, this could be three points. If you have X's on some of these and they were wrong, but you made them right, or the fact that you even found them by yourself, they become right. So we end up with three points score in that section. And we end up scoring all of this. So every time you find a mistake, it doesn't end up staying a mistake. It makes it all right. And what we're trying to teach you is that it's great to learn by your own mistakes. At this time, then, would you take this checklist and go through it, study your report, see if you can find your own mistakes, mark them with a half X or an X, and then go back over to your report and change them in the report. Go ahead now. Find your own mistakes. Turn off the tape and come back, and I'll tell you some more. You have just finished your whole report. The final thing that you'll want to know about that report is that you'll want to take this checklist like this, and you'll want to put it on the bottom of your report so that your report will be here. You'd have a title page on the front of your report. And then the checklist you put face down, and you put together so that it's stapled kind of at an angle, always staple at an angle so the reader can flip the pages. And on the back would be the checklist then, and it doesn't end up dirtying up your report. You have this lovely, clean title page on the front of it. And that makes a very nice looking research or non-research report. I want to point out one thing finally to you people. I want to point out that you all have been involved in le learning about what we call the writing process. And this was when many, many English teachers got together with many, many authors, and they planned out what was the process of actually writing. 
free writing, writing, revising, proofreading, and publishing. We know those as being very common. The only problem is that most of the effort, emphasis and effort is in the revising part. So that many times when you sit to write, you haven't done enough pre-writing exercises to be able to think through your information. And what we want you to do now is to be able to use the process I've designed, which causes you in steps one through, uh, one through seven to be able to think through the information. Most of our process thinks through the information, steps one through seven, and on steps eight and nine, you actually are doing the writing and the revising and the proofreading. So most of our, your process, can be, you, you can be using the writing process as long as you understand that most of the effort that you're doing is pre-writing when you're following my process. And on step eight, when you're actually writing it, it's simple. And step nine, when you're revising, proofing, and publishing, it makes it very easy. That might help you so that you don't feel you're not doing the writing process when you're doing this, because you are. You're doing it even better, because you're doing something with their th your own thinking. And that's the most important part. Enjoy this process and become a very successful writer. This is Thinking and Writing Process, Level 2.